Hello everyone, welcome again. Now we are going to start chapter number 9 of ACCF 6, which is Capital Allowances. Now in the previous chapter, I showed you that uh, the adjustment which we need to make to the trading profits. Now one of the adjustments was that we add back the depreciation because the HMRC say that depreciation is not an allowable expense for taxation. So that's why HMRC says you take your accounting profit and you add back the depreciation into it because depreciation is not allowed for tax purposes. Now on one hand, HMRC is saying depreciation is not allowed, that's why you add back. But what shall we do as a businessman? Is HMRC going to give us some benefit in, according, in accordance with the depreciation because we are adding back the depreciation? Yes, HMRC is giving us something else, which is known as capital allowance. Now for, cap, uh, for, tax, purposes, uh, for tax purposes, capital allowance is considered as depreciation. So basically, for, in our taxation purposes, uh, our depreciation is capital allowance. We are not studying accounting, we are studying taxation. So capital allowance is our depreciation. So what we do is we make our taxable profits and then we, uh, we make our trading profits for tax purposes. Then we deduct our capital allowance, uh, capital allowance out of that. Now that's what we have seen in our previous videos as well, which, is on, which was on the trading profits, that we make our trading profit yeah, so we, made, we take our accounting profit, we add back depreciation, however we deduct the capital allowance. All right? So that is depreciation, that is tax depreciation which we are going to deduct. We are adding back accounting depreciation, but we are deducting the uh, taxation depreciation which is capital allowance. All right? Now let's move to our notes. If you come to page number 21 of your lecture notes, uh, you can see the uh, capital allowances. So chapter number 9, uh, page 21 of your lecture notes, uh, capital allowances on the plant and machinery. Now there are different rates of the capital allowances on uh, different things. So first one which is the common one is called writing, writing down allowance, right? So examiner will give you a question, we'll do an example as well in the next video which is at the end of this chapter which is comprehensive example and which will examine almost everything which we have studied here. However, most common one in capital allowance is the writing down allowance, all right? So, because it is a depreciation, we know that in accounting, we have studied different accounting, different depreciation methods, like straight line method, or reducing balance method, or sums of digit method. Now, sums of digit method is, uh, no, is no, longer account, uh, no longer allowed by the standards, so you might not know about it. However, you know about straight line method and the reducing balance method anyway, if you have studied accounting. Right now, straight line method was that we take the value and we divide by the number of years or or whatever uh, after deducting the residual value of of the asset. So and that amount will be the depreciation, depreciation every year. That standard amount. However, reducing balance method was a little different. Right now, reducing balance method. What we do is we take the value, we deduct the depreciation, and then in the next year we will take this reduced value and apply the depreciation percentage on the reduced value. And the third year, we'll take the uh, further reduced value and we'll use that further reduced value in the next year to apply the reduced, uh, um, to apply the depreciation rate on the reduced method, uh, on the reduced amount. Now that's why it was called reduced balance method. That same thing apply in the capital allowances as well. We will use the reduced ba uh, reducing balance method only for depreciation purposes. Now, first one is writing down allowance, and uh, it will be at rate of 18% for the whole year. If the year is less than uh, 12 months, then we'll uh, proportionate it accordingly. All right, so it is at the rate of 18%. Now, as you can see on your, uh, on your screen, it says writing down allowance of 18% on reducing balance method is given on plant and machinery in each accounting period in the main pool. Writing down allowance will be, you know, it will be increased or decreased if accounting period is more than or less than 12 months. No writing down allowance is given in the year of sales, it says. However, full writing down allowance will be given in the year of purchase. Right, so you must remember this rule as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, annual investment allowance. Next one is our annual investment allowance. Now, basically, first 200,000 pounds spent on a plant and machinery is going to be a straight, will, uh, it will be straight capital allowance, all right? So first 200,000 pounds spent on plant and machinery, 100% annual investment allowance will be available on that, all right? So 100% uh, of the amount uh, we will deduct from our trading profits. Businesses can claim an annual investment allowance on the first 200,000 pounds spent on plant and machinery. 
annual investment allowance uh, will be you know divided by months over 12 if it is if the accounting period is less than 12 months or if it is more than 12 months after calculating annual investment allowance on plant and machinery purchased a uh, writing down allowance is also given on plant and machinery all right so after calculating writing down, uh, after calculating the uh, you know uh, annual investment allowance if there is anything left then we will apply the uh, you know writing down allowance on that annual investment allowance it says cannot be claimed on the cause so we cannot claim annual investment allowance on cause it won't be available first year allowance will be available on the cause though uh, if it is less than 75 grams per kilometer low emission cause so 100% uh, you know first year allowance will be available on the value of the car now this first year allowance will not be reduced or increased according to the months it will be straight 100% uh, right so it won't be increased or decreased a special rate pool after that it says now certain things will go into the special rate pool the first one which was a uh, uh, writing down last 18 percent that was main pool now the special rate pool is something else while in cal while doing the question we'll make different columns so one will be main pool then special rate pool and something like that so few things will go into the special rate pool and eight uh, percent of the writing down writing down allowance will be given in the special rate pool and it will be you know increased or decreased according to the months in the accounting period if it is more than 12 months <coughs> excuse me in this percentage will also be more uh, however if it is less than 12 months we will reduce this percentage uh, but for full year for 12 months it is eight eight percent now which things will go into this column expenditure on thermal insulation solar panels long life assets features integral uh, features integral to the integral to the building and uh, cause with co2 emission over 130 grams uh, per kilometer are included in the special rate pool writing down, writing down allowance of eight percent multiplied by months or 12 will be given annual investment allowance is used first on expenditure qualifying for special rate pool all right so when allocating the annual investment allowance 100 percent annual investment allowance of 200,000 pounds first we will apply on the special rate pool assets then in the main pool now long life assets these are the assets with a uh, life of over 25 years and uh, it's their cost of more than 100,000 pounds so these are called long life assets <clears throat> and what are the integral features to the building uh, so integral features to the building are electrical uh, and heating system cold water system space and water heating system and uh, powered system of ventilation and lifts and escalators and powered system of cooling and condition these are the things which are called integral features to the building and it will go into the special rate pool at the rate of 8% capital allowance will be available for whole year plant and machinery with private use now private use when we say private use private use by the proprietor not the employee please remember uh, when an employee is using something for private use that will be a business expense However, when a boss, when proprietor is using something for, for something for private use, that won't be a business expense and it will be considered as private use, right? So whenever there is a private use by the proprietor, not the individual, not the, sorry, not the uh, employee, private use by the proprietor, not the employee, then we will make a separate column of that asset. We will apply the relevant rate, which is 18% or 9% uh, or whatever, uh, uh, sorry 18 percent or uh, eight percent or whatever and uh, we will apply that rate however we will only take the capital loss uh, according to the business proportion of that say for example if asset with private use was 70 percent business use 30 percent private use then we will apply uh, eight uh, we will apply eight percent or 18 percent uh, you know um, capital allowance writing down allowance and uh, we will apply that then after that we'll only take 70% of that into the capital allowance section because that is only business portion 30% is private use anyway however we will only take into the separate column if it is private use by the proprietor so it says in the notes plant machinery with private use if there is a private use by the plant machinery if there is private use of the plant machinery by the proprietor 
not employed, then the capital allowance is calculated on the full cost. However, uh, only business proportion of the capital allowance can be claimed in order to deduct it from the trading profits. And it, in the brackets it says not applicable for the companies. Now why it does not applicable for the companies? Because in the companies, owners are the shareholders. Right? Shareholders are the owners. Now shareholders are not involved in, the, in running of the business anyway, so they won't be using anything for the private use. Only people who will be using anything for the private use will be the directors, and directors are the employees of the company anyway, you know that. Right? So directors, if the directors are using anything for the private use, that will be business expense anyway. Shareholders who are the owners of the business, they won't be in the business anyway, so they will be sitting outside. So there won't be any private use in the company's section for capital allowances. And in the notes it says such assets must be kept separate, so we'll make separate column of the private use assets. Balancing allowance or balancing charge. Sometimes what happens is that we have purchased an asset and after, few, after some period of time we have sold it. All right? Now when selling the asset, we'll take the writing down value of the asset after, you know, you know it, if we have purchased in one year, we have applied the writing down allowance and in the second year, we will apply writing down allowance as well. So after some period of time, we'll see the writing down value of the asset. Now if we, if we are going to sell that asset in that specific year, then we will see what is the writing down value. If we are selling more than what the writing down value is, the balancing charge will arise because we are making the profit. Now that balancing charge, you might think it is a good thing because we are selling at the higher price than the writing down value. Although it is good for accounting purposes, it is not good for tax purposes, right? Now this balancing charge will reduce our annual, uh, reduce our capital allowance. Balancing charge will reduce our capital allowance. However, if our, you know, writing down value is more uh, and we are selling less than that, then it is a balancing allowance. It will increase our capital allowances, right? However, we will only apply this balancing allowance and balancing charge to the, uh, we'll only apply it if it is only asset in the in the pool and if there are other assets as well we will apply to the whole pool we can't just pick one asset and apply to it we'll apply to the whole pool on the sale of the plant of machinery in the notes it says on the sale of the plant of machinery balancing charge or balancing allowance will arise uh, when calculating uh, sorry when an item of plant of machinery is sold for calculation purposes the sales proceeds are taken as lower of sales proceeds than original cost Normally, the profit which is balancing charge or the loss balancing allowance will not be calculated for sale of the assets in the pool unless uh, all the assets in the pool are sold when business ceases. After that, it says small balancing claim. Now, we purchased this asset, then we applied the uh, writing down allowance this year, that is reduced value. Next year, it will be our carrying value, it, is, it will be our brought forward value. Right? Now next year, if it's brought forward value at the start of the, at the, start of the year, if it's brought forward value is less than 1,000 pounds, then whole amount will be considered as a capital allowance. So that is called small, balance along, small balancing allowance. If the, if the balance in the main pool or special rate pool before claiming a writing down allowance remains less than 1,000 pounds, then the entire amount in the pool is written off instead of carrying forward. That is called a small balancing allowance. Sets purchased and sold in the same accounting period, we won't apply any uh, capital allowance on that. So items, if the item of uh, plant machinery is sold and purchased in the same accounting period, then no annual investment allowance or writing down allowance can be claimed on such assets. However, balance, balancing allowance or charge may be calculated on the sold assets. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the next page, it tells us how to calculate the capital loans on the cars. Now, if the car is less than 75 grams per kilometer, we know that it will go to the special rate pool. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, uh. Right. So, a car. If we know that if the car is less than 75 grams per kilometer, uh, it will. We will apply the 100% first year allowance on that. If it is between 76 and 130 grams, it will go into the main pool and we will apply the, you know, we will apply the writing down allowance at the rate of 18%. Uh, if it is 130 grams or greater than that, it will go into the special rate pool and uh, the tax, uh, the capital allowance rate, writing down allowance rate is at the rate of 8% per year. If there is a private use of the car by the proprietor, uh, if it is, there is a private use, then we know that we will make a separate column of that and, you know, 
we'll take uh, the we'll apply the capital allowance according to the given percentage and however we'll only take the business proportion to the capital allowance section and it says that no annual investment, annual investment allowance is given on the cause we know already know that anyway so short life assets now which are the call which are the short life assets now if we purchased an asset with an intention to sell this asset within eight years period then it is called a short life asset and we'll make a separate column of that now why we are making the separate column of that because if we put it in the normal column there will be other things as well in the normal column when we sell an asset we can't claim balancing charge or balancing allowance on just single asset we have to apply for the whole pool right so that's why we're making a separate pool for that separate column for that because we think that we can sell it within eight years period now when we make a separate column of that and we sell that asset within eight years period then what would what will happen that we will apply the balancing charge or balancing allowance please remember balancing charge is not good for us whereas balancing allowance is good for us because balancing charge will reduce our capital allowance balancing allowance will increase our balancing allowance a uh, balancing allowance will increase our capital allowance all right so we will only be doing this deep pooling this process is called deep pooling when we make the separate pool when we make the separate column of this asset now the deep pooling is uh, you know only beneficial as i said uh, if we think that we can sell this asset within eight years period and that we it will give us the balancing allowance now say for example if we already know that we can sell this asset within eight years period however a balancing charge will arise then it is no good to make the separate column because balancing charge will ultimately reduce our capital allowance so that's why if we know if we already know that you know balancing charge will arise then we more then we won't do the deep pooling thingy because it is not good not good for us all right and uh, there are a few things a uh, few more things as well uh, as we'll see in the notes now these are the assets which are which the company wishes to sell within eight years after the accounting period of purchase the company may elect to keep such assets separate and this is called deep pooling annual investment allowance can be claimed on such assets it is advisable to claim annual investment allowance uh, against the main pool first and then against these short life assets now writing down allowance of 18 uh, percent will be given 18 percent multiplied by months of 12 so if it is less than 12 months then it will be months over 12 will be given and uh, if such an asset is not sold within eight years period after the accounting period of purchase then it will go into the main pool all right you know, this, this thing was a new thing. So if you haven't sold the asset within, you know, within eight years period, so it was in the, it was in the, uh, you know, separate column, it was de-pooled. However, if you did not sell it within the eight years period, then this, you know, amount, the balancing allowance, uh, sorry, balancing amount, balancing amount will go into the main pool. Right? So it says that if, uh, if an asset is not sold within eight years after the accounting period of purchase, then after eight years, the writing down value of the short life asset will be transferred to the plant and machinery pool. So plant and machinery pool basically normally is main pool or it could be the special rate pool as well if the asset is of that sort. And you know that rate is different in that case as well. All right. Now we'll do a question in our next video, a comprehensive example. If you want to have a go at this example, you can do so if you have an idea how to calculate the capital allowance. You can do so, uh, or if you want me to do it, I will do it in the next video and you can watch me then. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.